The recipe I will use today is the one you can find on the description of this video. Just look for the dough calculator. I think that um, if you follow me you already know it and probably use it. But let's move to my table now. Everything is already there waiting for us. Water and yeast and flour and salt. Okay, everything is ready to prepare our dough. Water, yeast, flour, salt in, in this order. We will uh, add everything in my container. So let me make room for my container. There we go. Okay, so first I will add the water and my yeast. Once again, I will not give you the uh, measurement because you should check the uh, recipe in uh, the description of the, this video. You will find my dough calculator with the exact doses I use. Um, I start with the water, as you've seen. Uh, it's simple tap water, room temperature water, and I added some yeast. In this case, it is active dried yeast, uh, which is supposed to be activated in warm water with a pinch of sugar if you want to follow the instruction of the manufacturer but i'm not the manufacturer i'm telling you how i uh, work the method work the results are in front of you when you watch my videos when you see my uh, instagram feed you see what i do using this method as i said this is uh, active dry yeast uh, i would have used uh, the same way also the uh, instant yeast. I always start with water and yeast. Let me dissolve it a little bit. Now have a look at the upper right corner of the video. I will uh, leave you a link to a video where I explain the differences between the different kind of yeast, the active yeast, instant yeast, the fresh yeast as well. Uh, also along uh, the video, uh, pay attention at the upper right corner because I will uh, give you more links of different videos. For example, the video where I uh, talk uh, about the flower, uh, so on and so forth. And talking about the flour, this is now time for me to add a little bit of flour. I will add around half of my whole amount. And I mix with that a particular, I'm not looking with for, for a particular consistency or, or whatever. Now, uh, this flour, uh, in this case, is a uh, regular uh, zero zero or double zero if you want flour um, with a fair uh, content in protein 12.5 percent which is not too strong but is strong enough for me to uh, afford a, a long rising time uh, as you know uh, you could also use some uh, bread flour uh, which has a mm, good uh, content in, pro in proteins and once again have a look at the upper right corner i will uh, link a video it's now time for me to add uh, some salt. I add it later just because uh, I need to keep it separate from the yeast to avoid unwanted uh, reactions. Uh, as you probably know, uh, salt can uh, also kill the yeast. So uh, we try to keep them separate to uh, avoid anything bad. I will, let's say, split this flour in another couple of rounds. Now, at this point, I'm just uh, trying to get all the ingredients together. In a while, I will move to my table and I will start get my hands dirty and I will tell you something about the, the kneading itself.
okay it's time to start kneading by hand I have my own uh, technique uh, honestly there is no uh, right or wrong when it's time to uh, knead your dough as long as you get uh, first a, a fairly strong gluten mesh we need a strong gluten mesh so it will uh, trouble the gases uh, produced by the yeast during during his fermentation, which is his uh, uh, metabolism, basically. Uh, you also need to uh, incorporate some air into, into your dough, because the air is what is uh, needed by the yeast uh, in the first part of its metabolism. As you can see, the dough is already coming together. You need to be patient, you need some elbow grease, because you need to work your dough long enough. And in a while I will tell you, I will show you actually, uh, how to uh, check if your dough is ready or not. As you can see, the dough is already almost complete. However, I feel like there is a little bit, bit more work to put in uh, because the gluten mesh, in my opinion, is still not strong enough. What I want to recommend you is uh, when you knead your dough, just don't go too hard because otherwise you risk ripping uh, your dough and then the gluten mesh again and again and again. Uh, I've seen uh, the, the typical, the, Typical movement of uh, uh, kneading is the kind of this kind of movement. But if you are not um, experienced with it, uh, whenever you do like this, you rip uh, these strands here. So I would not really recommend it. Of course, it's up to you. As I said, is, there is no uh, right or wrong. But I just want to make my life easier. And uh, this is why I uh, knead the way uh, you just seen. Also, try not to go too hard, because if you go too hard, you, um, first of all, <laughs> everything will be way, way, way more sticky, and you uh, destroy, this is another way to destroy your, uh, your dough. If you do like this, like this, this is not what we are looking for. As you can see, we are not building anything, anything real, really, really uh, strong. So let's try and recover it. Okay, it's time to uh, test our dough to see uh, if it's needed enough. And as, you, as I said already, I just poke gently my finger on the sur surface. Uh, you probably see that it springs back uh, fairly quickly. I will do it here, probably you, oh, maybe you know what. I will try and show it closer to you. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see, maybe like this. Yeah, it should be probably like with this perspective, it should be easier, easier to see. Uh, it seems elastic enough, and I can also uh, 
stop needing here. As you can see, the surface is not perfectly smooth right now. This happens especially um, the, the more the more the uh, flour is rich in protein and the more this happens. But uh, since I do like it when it's really smooth, I will leave it here for a couple of minutes, five minutes covered, of course, because I don't want it to dry and I will work it out uh, gently uh, in two seconds. I will show you how smooth it will come. In the meanwhile, you can also have a look always in the upper right corner of the, of the screen. I will leave you the link uh, for the video I did about the um, window pane test. See you in a second. Here I am again after four or five minutes. It's time to check our dough. I can easily reshape my ball, my dough ball, quickly. And as you can see, it is super nice and smooth. It's elastic, the gluten is strong enough. It's time for me, it's ready. It's time for me to uh, let it rest and go to the next step, which I will tell you in a second. Now the dough is ready, it will rest on the table for around an hour and then I will put it in the fridge. Tomorrow morning around 30, maybe 9, Sunday, it depends on what time I will get up. I will take it out and after around 30 minutes at room temperature, I will roll two dough balls. They will proof at room temperature until lunchtime around 1 for me. So they will proof for around four and a half hours. The total fermentation time starting from now will be around 22 hours. It's around three in the afternoon right now for me. Very important, these timings I just gave you are not cast in stone. They are just a guidance. Uh, you can change them, experiment different timings and find what works best for you.